Hey guys, what is going on? It's Brycat23 here with X Trades. Today we're going over some member selected tickers. The first is Square, the second is CrowdStrike, and the third is AMD. All three of these have pretty interesting setups. I am going to go over Square and CrowdStrike first because I think that they're the most actionable, whereas AMD, I'm a little more uncertain about future price movements just based on current trends. As far as Square is concerned, what I'm really seeing here is just this falling wedge that we have. And we have a falling, falling wedge coming out of a nice uptrend, which just again kind of confirms this bullish bias that is associated with the falling wedge pattern. So it's really nice to see from a bullish standpoint. Additionally, based on the height of the pattern, we, we have a pretty lofty goal in terms of expected price move. So the height of the pattern, the first touch of resistance is around 275 and our first touch of support is around 245. So we're really looking at about a $30 height, which is definitely a good price move once you get out of the trend and, and trade it to the upside if you do get that expected breakout. So essentially with this uptrend, and this $30 price target. Again, we have to take that percentage meeting price target from the pattern site, just because it's unlikely that all these price targets are gonna reach that full expectation of this $30 move. So with wedges, there's typically about a 60% meeting price target, typically associated with falling and rising wedges alike. So we're gonna take that and apply it to that $30 expected move. So that suggests about a $20 move to the upside. Now, again, just assuming prices are currently at around 245, say we break out at 250, which seems like a reasonable level if we were to break out, then that would put our projected price target right around 270 again, 250 plus that $20 expected move. And that price level has confluence, again, with a key area that was an area of support and has previously within this wedge acted as an area of resistance. So this is definitely a good area to be taking profits if this trend does break out as expected and, and you get a nice bullish run. This is the area that I would definitely aim at in terms of price targets in the near term. Again, something to keep in mind is once you do get the breakout, supposing it does happen, you really do have to watch out for this 257 price level as well as near term, it's been an area of resistance. And then earlier intra wedge, it was an area of support. And going back to February, it was an area of support. And then later in February, it was an area of resistance. So prices are definitely sensitive to this 257, 258 price level. So you really wanna see prices really bust through this area with some good volume when we do get breakout of the falling wedge. So that's really what I'm looking at in terms of price movements for Square based on this falling wedge. If you do have a slightly different bias than me, that's totally fine. I think that this is a falling wedge because of kind of the percentage retracement of this uptrend. But if you think it's a bullish pennant, then ultimately you're going to have very similar expectations the height of the bullish pennant is around $50 from the very top to the base of the flagpole. So ultimately that $50 multiplied by the 60% meeting price target, which is even a little bit generous, that would suggest a $30 move to the upside. So if you do have that bullish flag or bullish pennant bias, remember that $30 price target is taken from the last touch of support. It's not taken from the breakout area, like a rising wedge or, or a triangle is. So you'd look at a $30 move from the last touch of support and our last touch of support was 240. So that again has confluence with both our falling wedge price target of 270 and that key area and kind of max price target of 270 based on price reactions within the wedge and key levels derived by, you know, mid-February price action uh, when prices were trending up towards kind of all-time highs. So either way, whether you're leaning uh, on a falling wedge or whether you're leaning 
on kind of a bullish pennant. The price targets are still the same in my opinion, but it's bullish either way. And uh, obviously keep an eye out. We do have an earnings event coming up on May 20th. So once that comes around, then there's really no, there's really not much merit in terms of uh, projecting price movements as there's just gonna be new fundamental news about the ticker. So really you just kind of have to trade this pattern. If it does break out before earnings event, you have to trade it based on the technicals, but once earnings event comes around, you really kind of have to throw this price pattern and the expectations out the window and just kind of watch for reactions to key levels and just how prices are trading around them after the earnings event occurs, just because it definitely does change the sentiment as new value is gathered about the stock. As far as the next ticker, CrowdStrike, I think is in a really interesting position we actually missed the initial breakout. I'm, I'm a little bummed that I didn't catch this sooner, but we have the opposite of square where we have a bearish rising wedge. So we had the falling wedge before with an uptrend leading into it. Now we have the bearish rising wedge with a downtrend into it. So these are two of my favorite trends to play. Again, taking a bearish consolidation pattern and throwing uh, bearish confirmation to the downside and, and kind of that bullish uptrend to the upside leading into the patterns is definitely nice to see and gives you a little extra boost that the price pattern leading into that definitely has some strength and likely a little more, uh, a little more likelihood of breaking out uh, than if things were the other way around. So with this rising wedge, I'm definitely thinking that the price target based on the height of the pattern would actually, again, have confluence with a key level, which is this 198 price zone. And I'm gonna walk you through why. And it ultimately, again, comes from this first touch of support being right around 208, or the first touch of resistance being around 208, and the first touch of support being right around 170, right? So that's the first thing we look at. And that tells us that the height of this price pattern is $38. And again, we just talked about it, that 60% meeting price target. That means that we take the 60%, multiply it by our $38 height, and that puts us at about a 22 projected dollar move to the downside. And we know that this falling wedge broke out right around $2 or $220. And $220, minus that $22 expected move to the downside, again, has confluence with that 198 price level. So that would definitely be a good price target based on this price pattern and based on historical areas of support and resistance. Now, it is important that you realize that this area of 208 could definitely act as an area of support, and it is currently. So I definitely wouldn't look to trade to the downside unless we get a good high volume break below 208 uh, and, and really can see that continuation to the downside. Because obviously you can see once we broke into this trend and the trend began forming initially, this 208 area was the area of resistance. It was very difficult to break through. And then once we did get above it, it acted as a key area of support. And now again, after breaking down from the wedge, it's acting as the area of support again. So you really need to see this area broken before really acting on it and looking for that continuation to the downside. Otherwise you could see a little bit of a bounce in the near term. So I would definitely keep an eye on it uh, and, and see kind of how buyers and sellers are interacting with this price level come Monday. And that's really what I see as far as kind of uh, near term price trends for this, uh, for this ticker. But I, again, I do think there is good room for, you know, an eight to dollar, eight to ten dollar move to the downside if you do get that expected breakout. Uh, again, based on uh, the previous consolidation patterns and based on these key historical areas of support and resistance. As far as AMD goes, AMD I'm a little bit bummed about because obviously the earnings event definitely kind of manipulated price and, and that's kind of why we're in a tricky trading area now. But ultimately AMD was in a really nice rising triangle before the earnings event. And, and ultimately the rising triangle had a height of about $9 from the first touch of resistance. 
to the first touch of support. And with rising triangles, they have a better performance in terms of meeting price targets than our wedges do. So they usually have a 70 percentage percent meeting price target. So we'd expect a move uh, just north of $6 based on that. And, and the height that's coming from, again, the height of $9 multiplied by 70%. So just above $6. And we know that this 84 price level is our area of resistance. So that puts our expected move right around $90. If you do get that bullish breakout, which we ultimately did, and we got it with good volume. So one thing that's difficult is we got a really nice breakout and, and a nice continuation. Uh, and then we got stuck at this 87 price level, which was definitely to be expected, again, based on historical areas of resistance that were established back in November. And then it acted as a good area of support. And then again, clearly acting as an area of resistance in late February and early March. So you knew that this price area was definitely going to be a sticky one and a tough one to contend with. So prices would likely have to consolidate and, and pause here before continuing to the upside. However, we obviously had an earnings event and, and prices gapped up and then closed much lower on heavy volume and, and the market kind of decayed in general towards the end of this week, which definitely did not help. So ultimately prices ended up selling off heavily once, once we actually reached right around the price target of this trend. Once we hit that 89 price level, uh, which would have been nice, you know, that's a dollar within the price target area, but ultimately sold off heavily to the downside, lots of volume coming in. And what really is just kind of the worst thing about this is that we ended up breaking through that old area of resistance, which should be acting as a new support when there's so much volume uh, to the upside that contributed. So this just really means that there's been a shift in the dynamic between buyers and sellers in this ticker and that the sellers have really taken over in the, in the near term. So that really kind of negates any near term price targets that I have. If we had held this price level, then there's definitely a chance that we could have, uh, could have formed a new bullish pattern and maybe tested 89 again in the near future. But again, because we, we failed to hold this level, I really can't, suggest any future price targets based on this trend since we broke that key area uh, of 84. That being said, we could still definitely see a bounce off of this trend line support. It should act as a bit of a, a at least a, a soft support zone and you could see a, a nice light bounce. Uh, it could also be a heavy bounce, but there's really no way uh, no way to tell until you see the price action come in and the volume come in. Uh, but ultimately, I, I, I wouldn't put too much weight on it. Again, if you're a scalper, then you could definitely make a nice trade off of it. But there's nothing that I can do in terms of kind of projecting a future price movement uh, based on any of the data that I've got from, you know, after this earnings event when prices have just been trending downwards on heavy volume. Uh, and then even as far as the moving averages go, there really isn't much sensitivity for AMD to the 20 day and 50 day simple moving averages, which are just personally my favorite ones to use as a lot of tickers often have uh, often have sensitivity to them. Uh, there is maybe a little bit of sensitivity uh, to the 20 day simple moving average, but it's it's nothing it's nothing too crazy, especially when prices are consolidating. Uh, in this range and not really trending in a direction. Um, so I really wouldn't put too much weight on the moving averages or dynamic supports uh, or resistances in this area either. So I would really just kind of give more time for uh, prices to establish a new trend and for volumes to kind of normalize again uh, before looking for a setup on AMD, unless again, you are a scalper and are just kind of looking to take a bounce uh, or are looking to trade this triangle uh, support to the downside. Uh, so that's really all I have for you guys today with AMD, CrowdStrike, and Square again. I definitely like the setups on CrowdStrike and Square in the near term. Again, AMD, I just I don't have too much confidence on future price movements based on what I'm seeing today. But if you guys have any questions again, please just let me know and, and reach out in the comments below or reach out to me in the chat. So thank you guys so much for joining and I hope that you have a great weekend. Thanks so much.